Hello, I'm Dave Cruz from Desert Gateway Baptist Church, and uh, this is the fourth in a series of many lectures on methods of Bible study. And today I'd like to discuss with you uh, the devotional Bible study. Now, many believers uh, will depend upon booklets like this. Baptist Bread is what we use uh, in our church, and they depend upon those for their devotional life. Now, these booklets are fine. Well, they're very good, as a matter of fact. But you'll find that each page for each day uh, will have a passage of Scripture, and then they'll explain the Scripture just briefly, and then give an application or maybe some illustration you can think about the Lord uh, throughout the day. And these are good, uh, but we don't want you to depend upon these things. Um, you know, as, as a new believer in Christ, you become a babe in Christ. And babies need to be spoon-fed, obviously. But after a period of time, you want the child to grow up where they can start feeding themselves. And the whole point of these mini lectures is to teach you and to help you learn how to uh, feed yourself rather than depending upon other people to give you the Word of God. Now, today we're talking about this devotional Bible study. What is a devotional Bible study? This method involves taking a passage of the Bible, whether large or small, preferably small, and prayerfully meditating on it until the Holy Spirit shows you a way to apply its truth to your own life in a way that is personal, practical, possible, and measurable. And there are four simple steps in doing this Bible study. First of all, what you want to do uh, after you select the passage you want to look at is to pray for insight on how to apply the passage. Ask God to open up your mind and then also your heart that you're willing to do whatever God shows you uh, from the Word of God. Secondly, you want to meditate on the verses you have chosen to study. Now, meditation is not simply uh, sitting in a corner with your legs crossed, chanting some kind of mantra. Uh, but rather, in the Bible, meditation is thought digestion, where you're going over the same passage over and over again to make it a part of your life. It's sort of like a cow chewing its cud. Uh, when cows eat grass, uh, they'll swallow it whole, and then after a period of time, they'll just burp it right back up, and they'll re-chew the same contents over and over again, and then swallow it again. And that's chewing the cud. That, that's what meditation basically is. Meditation is going over the same material over and over again until it becomes a part of your life. Now, there are several ways that you can meditate upon the scriptures, and I'll give you some suggestions here. First of all, you can visualize the scene of the narrative in your mind, if it's a narrative, uh, and trying to place yourself in their sandals. Uh, what must have been like to uh, witness Elijah uh, and, and the false prophets of Baal up on Mount Carmel? What was it like to sit by the Sea of Galilee and uh, listen to Jesus talk? And, uh, what was it like uh, uh, to witness in the Valley of Elah, David beheading Goliath? I mean, those are wonderful stories, but so you can visualize the scene. Now, what would you do if you were in that position? You can ask yourself those questions. Secondly, you can emphasize words in the passage under study. Read it through several times, each time placing a different emphasis uh, on each word. For example, you take Philippians 4.13. I can do all things, or I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. In other words, you, each time you read it through, you'll come up with a different uh, perspective on that verse. Uh, thirdly, you can paraphrase the passage. In other words, you place the passage in your own words. Now, you're not trying to correct the Bible or anything like that. What you're doing is just trying to uh, put it in up-to-date language that you can understand. So, so you can paraphrase the Bible. Uh, fourthly, you can personalize the passage. You can place your name in the place of pronouns or nouns used in the passage. For example, if you're reading over uh, in 1 John chapter 4 and verse uh, 19, it says, We love him because he first loved us. Well, you can say, Dave Cruz loves God, loves the Lord, because he first loved Dave Cruz. Of course, you'd use your own name. <laughs> okay. And then, fifthly, you can pray the passage back to God. Uh, what you can do is when you come across a passage of Scripture, maybe it strikes you that you need to just talk to the Lord about that issue, about what, what the Lord is showing you from the Scriptures. And then lastly, I like to use what's called Space Pets. And Space Pets is an acrostic. And what you can do is take the, the, the acrostic Space Pets, and each one of those letters represents the first word to a question you want to ask. The first one is, is there a sin to confess? Do I need to make any restitution? In other words, uh, are you showing me something, God, in this word of yours that uh, I need to correct in my life? Is there something that I've done in my life that's wrong and I need to confess it to you? So you need to ask yourself that question. Does the passage of Scripture also, letter P, would stand for promise to claim? Is there something there that in, in the Scriptures that God is showing you that uh, you can claim as a promise, as a, a universal promise? Have you met the conditions for that promise? 
Thirdly, the A stands for attitude, attitude to change. Am I willing to work on a negative attitude and begin building toward a positive one? And sometimes you come across passages of scripture that you can really identify with the character. And uh, but, you know, the Bible doesn't just show uh, all the positive things that Bible characters do, but also the negative ones as well. And sometimes you can learn something about your own human nature as well. So uh, is there an attitude to change? Fourthly, is there a command to obey? And are you willing to obey that command no matter how you feel? That's a good question. Uh, sometimes God points out. The reason why a lot of people don't read the Bible is because every time they pick up that Bible, there's a big finger pointing right back at them, pointing out something that they need to do and correct in their life. But is there a command to obey? You may need to ask yourself that question. Fifthly, is there an example to follow? Is there an example to follow? Is it a positive example for me to copy, or is it a negative one to avoid? And believe me, there's both you know, found in the Word of God, uh, both good guys and bad guys, and you certainly want to avoid the bad ones. Uh, then, sixthly, is there a prayer to pray? Is there anything you need to pray back to God? Sometimes you will come across a passage of Scripture that just really pricks your heart, and you need to talk to the Lord about it. Uh, and not just confessing sin. Sometimes you need wisdom. Sometimes uh, you need encouragement. Uh, but sometimes when you read the Scriptures, it will point out something, uh, something lacking in your life you need to talk to the Lord about. Seventhly, is there an error to avoid? Is there any problem that I should be alert to or be aware of? Number eight, is there a truth to believe? As I said before, the Bible has a doctrinal application. Sometimes you come across verses that will talk about God or other uh, biblical teachings and, and things you need to learn about the Word of God. Is there a truth to believe? And then finally, the S stands for something to praise God for. Or is there something that you can be thankful for? And you'd be surprised how many times God will point things out to you that this is what I've done for you, and you need to be thankful for it. So, uh, something to praise God for, and something to be thankful for. Now, the third part of this uh, uh, Bible study is to write out an application. And you want this application, first of all, to be personal. You want to write your uh, application in the first person singular, something that you are going to do. Secondly, it needs to be practical. You need to plan a definite course of action which you t intend to take. Uh, and then thirdly, it has to be possible something you know you can accomplish. Uh, don't, don't make it so far out of reach that you, you'll never make it, but something that you can accomplish probably within a week's time. And then it has to be provable, fourthly. Uh, set up some sort of follow-up to check up on your success in doing it. And it has to be measurable so you'll know that you've done it. Uh, so therefore, you need to have a time limit. And then finally, you need to memorize a key verse from your study. Now, if you're just studying one verse, that would be the verse you want to memorize. But uh, these are the four points of, of doing a, a devotional Bible study. Now, very briefly, I'm going to go through a, a, just a simple a devotion with you and show you how I did mine, okay? In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 3, uh, we read, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. And so what I did, of course, is you, I prayed, uh, asked God to give me direction there. And then the meditation part, what I did is I paraphrased the verse, put it in my own words, and this is what I said. Each time I get weary of the nonsense that people do to me or around me, I need to consider what Jesus went through for my sake. So, uh, that's a paraphrase. And then I went through some of the space pets. Now, not all the space pets will apply to every part of, uh, of Scripture, but what I did, I, I just selected a few here. Uh, first of all, is there a sin to confess? And sometimes I get weary. Sometimes there's a lack of patience in my life or anger. Uh, maybe there's a desire to give up and quit. And so I put that down as, as the sins to confess. Uh, the attitude to change. I wrote down, I need to quit being so selfish as to always expect the right treatment from others. And then there's a command. I need to keep my eyes focused on Christ and not on others or on my trials. There's also certainly the example to follow. Jesus enduring such contradiction of sinners against himself. And then for prayer, I, I just simply said, Lord, help me to develop patience with other people. And then the praise, the praise is that Jesus did not quit, but suffered willingly for me. And then for the application, what I wrote down was this. Each time this week, whenever someone irritates me, <laughs> I will stop and focus upon Christ and ask for His grace to persevere. See, that's measurable. That's something that you can do within a week and you can check up on yourself. And of course, the memorization is the verse itself. Hebrews 12, 3. So that's, that's it. That's how you do a devotional Bible study. And this can take anywhere from, oh, 10 to 20 minutes to do. And uh, you'll find it very rewarding. And make sure that you keep a notebook. Make sure you write down these things. 
And um, uh, sometimes when you, when you write things down uh, in, in months ahead, you can reflect back on what you've studied and it'll help you to grow. Sometimes I found that pastor uh, will preach on the very message, a uh, very text I was studying on previously. And uh, it's very interesting to, to watch how God works that way. Well, that's all I have to say. By the way, this board right here is my wife's idea, so thank you, Marty.